Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. First of all, apologies for the bit of a delay between the last video and this. I like to sort of like do them a bit more frequently, but I've been let down by workmen. For this one, as you'll see soon, I need an electrician to do me some wiring in at the fuse box. I'm not working on the live electrics. I'll do everything else, but not that. So uh, I rung this guy up. It was recommended by somebody else. Won't mention his name. Um, yeah, I'll come along and give you a price. I'm no problem doing that. A week goes by, he gives him another ring, no sign of him. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, I've been busy. I'll, I'll definitely come this week. Another week goes by. Oh yeah, I'm uh, I, I'm definitely going to come this week. Three Over three weeks now, still, he's never rung me at all. So I've had to get another one. Now this guy came, bang on the appointed time, gave me a price and everything. So the job's flowing along there. So won't be too long before I do that video on the plasma core. But the reason I'm squeezing this one in is because when I got that black plasma cut home, this is the plug that's on the end of it. It's not a normal domestic three pin plug. It uses quite a lot of current. It goes, it's a 40 amp plasma cutter. It's only got a 16 amp thing on the end of it. Reading up on the forums, that's fine because there's only a short bit of cable and it'll regulate itself down and thermal trip out and this and the other. But there's no way I was going to wire it up to a normal domestic 13 amp plug. So I'm having to fit this external commando style socket. Now I thought, because I'm having to lift all my floorboards up and drill through the wall from outside and, and, and do all the usual stuff, instead of fitting a 16 amp external socket to match this, I will fit a 32 amp one. I might as well, because it's only the same amount of work involved, a bigger cable and a bigger uh, socket, but no extra work really. And the good thing is with a 32 amp there, I've got enough for another charge point of a, a second electric vehicle. I will never ever get, there's only me on my own in the house, but it's going to be there. And it's the same amount of work. So I thought, why not? Like, stick a th It's more future proof. I've got a, a good 32 amp supply to the outside then. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm squeezing this video in be between doing it before I screwed it to the wall so I can show it a bit better on here. And this is the one I'm fitting. I'll show you shortly on um, the one I got from a tool station and the price of it and that. But it's IP67 rated, which means it's fully waterproof. Obviously it has to be if it's going outside. If it's something like IP44, that's not fully waterproof. Um, that's for that fitting inside a shed or a garage or a workshop or something. If you're going outside in the elements, you need IP67. So that is this one. And uh, you twist that to open it. It's on a spring steel. It's got a silicon sealing ring in there. And this interrupt switch, or whatever you call it, you can only turn it on when a plug is plugged in so totally safe no none of the grandkids or anything like that are going to lift the flap stick the fingers in it can't possibly be live there unless a plug is plugged in so i'm halfway through that now um so the rest of this video is going to be on the full install of that from the meter under the floor up the wall and, and showing you in in place but uh, i thought i'll do this bit of the video now because very very shortly i'll be screwing this to the wall i've got all the floorboards up in the bedroom it's been a nightmare morning emptying the wardrobe moving bedside cabinets and everything to lift floorboards putting rods through to drag the cable through it's a really hefty six mil armored six mil individual uh, cores armored cable and uh I'll, again i'll show you show you that shortly but uh that is it now it looks really well built these four screws here, you'll do them. They're stainless steel, so you're not going to have any trouble in the future with them. And that comes off. And then your back box here has got your normal three at the bottom, three at the top, one at each side, two at the back. So whichever side your cable entry is coming in, from the back or the top or the bottom, you're not going to have any problems with that. They're not the normal sort of like easy knockout ones there's still quite a lot of plastic there on the bit that pushes out so i've just drilled that big enough for my cable to fit through and then i'm going to um, 
put a bit of silicon round inside. Again, the back holes, four back holes, you've got to drill through, they, they don't knock out. So uh, once you put your back box on, fed your cable up through that, that's the connections there. So I'll just show it you close up in case you need to see. Again, it looks really well made and uh, don't know when I mentioned, made in England or made in the UK. How often can you say that these days? So, uh, uh, when I sort of freeze frame that, that's all the info on it. So, uh, like I said, that's what I'm halfway through fitting now. All the boards are still up, um, cables run. I've got to screw that to the wall and everything. So, uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll show you which one it is that I bought of two stations and a couple of other ones, um, and I'll it'll give the price of that, and then uh, we'll carry on with the rest of the video. Once it's all fitted, I'll show you all the the, the uh, photos of the full job done and uh, all wired up with the, uh, and the meter box by the electrician, and then the next video after this will be the uh, the plasma cutter in use. So uh, we'll stop it now, and next time you see me on this video will be once the whole thing is uh, connected up. Okay, so this is the one, as you see, I got from Tool Station. It was 33.43. That included postage as well. That was the final bill I got, 33.43. When you are looking for one, if you're looking around for finding the best price, always make sure, if it is going outside, like, like uh, mine was, that here ip67 rating which means it's protected against dust and water ingress um, if you're wondering what the ip ratings are if we look at this chart here the first number so ip67 so the first one is six so that's totally protected against dust and the second number seven so ip67 is protected against the effects of immersion between 15 centimeters and a meter so basically totally sort of waterproof and dust proof now if you look at this one here you say oh that looks the same 20 pound 50 it's 24 quid including that a lot cheaper you can see that is only um where are we let's say it's somewhere ip degree 44 ip44 so that is only protected against solid objects over a millimeter so it's not dust proof at all and uh, therefore protected against water sprayed from all directions so uh, reasonably waterproof but uh, ip67 absolutely totally waterproof of course that waterproofness will only when it's in that state once you've knocked these out or drilled these out for your input cable you'll have to seal around that inside with silicon but of course mine it's bottom fed it's a very tight fit i will be sealing it with silicon anyway um but even without that it's going to be totally weatherproof from the rain so like i said that was the one i bought uh here was a similar one if you look at that 3343 here's one from rs 44 quid including that so 11 more I don't, um yeah that's next that's free delivery as well but 11 quid more and it looks exactly the same unit so uh yeah that one from tool station was the one i got i couldn't find it at all on screw fixes um site had a look there's quite a few sort of unswitched single sockets and that but uh, i couldn't find a 32 amp switch one like this at all so uh, that's where i got it from from tool station right now this is the cable i used uh this is it on tool station i uh i saw it in various places but uh that one there it's it's you see six mil cores three core because we're just using it on the single phase it's got like the three phase coloring but uh it's just normal three core and it's armored which means it's got that steel coating on there you can see it a bit better there in that close-up so that's exactly the cable i used 
but I didn't get it from Tool Station. You see it's on here in Tool Station, it's four pound eighteen uh, per meter. I managed to get it from the local little electrical shop. It's just a high street shop selling normal uh, domestic plugs and, and sockets and things. Dead handy to have, and uh, usually sort of like quite dear with things, but. He sold it me at three ninety nine per meter. Now the cheapest I'd seen it online was three sixty six a meter, but then you had to pay postage on top of that. So he sold it me at three ninety nine, so four quid a meter. I wanted six meters, twenty four quid, and he had a, a, a reel left with seven meters on, so he threw that last meter in free of charge. So I ended up getting seven meters for twenty four quid. Now, uh, which I thought was pretty good value, so. Uh, and it's nice to support your local shops anyway. It's horrible when they they go out of business because they can't compete with the internet. So uh, I would have even paid a bit more for it. So uh, that is the sort of stuff you need. But uh, yeah, so try your local shop if it has got any. And if not, just do a search. But that's uh, the sort you need. It's it That armoring makes it really, really awkward to fit. It doesn't coil very well. But um, it does make it tough for any external run if anything hits it anybody kicks it or whatever so uh yep yeah, that's the stuff to get so there's the boards up in the bedroom that's the position uh corresponding to the outside wall where it's been drilled i've drilled through to the left of there is the back of the house it'd have been better right at the back of the house but i didn't want an external cable running that way and to run it internally would have meant boards up in other rooms and everything so this is about as far to the left towards the back of the house i can get it uh, that's the uh it coming through from the outside you can see i've put it through a duct uh plastic overflow pipe duct no real need hurt in my mind for for a duck because it's a really heavily armored cable as you'll see shortly but uh that's how you're supposed to do it so i did it that way and uh board up halfway down the bedroom as you can see near the foot of the bed there from there i was managed to get some like fiberglass extension rods through to uh tie to the end of the cable and pull it through to the the final meter position so i didn't need any any other boards up than them two in the bedroom that's it coming through at the meter uh, there's a good sort of four foot or so there coiled up ready for the electrician so he should have uh, plenty to work with there and you can see there the outside diameter of the uh, the total cable 15 and a half millimeters each internal core live neutral and earth is six mil diameter and then you've got like a white sheath covering them then you've got your steel band cables cover in that and then your final black outer sheath so a uh, really hefty cable not easy to get around corners and that so uh, just be prepared for that that's it there you can see the brown black and gray in this case that's like three-phase coloring but the electrician will uh, i dare say be putting some sleeve in some normal green and yellow earth sleeving and blue for the neutral over them wires but uh Nobody's going to be branching into that. They're not going to be ever seen, so it doesn't really matter, but we'll see what it does. Uh, and you can see all these strands of steel cable protecting it. So, uh, yeah, a pretty, very, very strong. Uh, you could probably run a car into that and, and still be okay. And that's it coming through the outside wall. You can see the end of the sleeve there. Just got to run some cement around there when the, the job's finished. But this is as far as I've got now. And up into the meter box. I'm, I'm going to be putting ferrules on there. I'll show you at the end. You can see the hole in the bottom is quite big. I had to do that to clear uh, the cable, the strands and things. But uh, that will be sealed with silicon at the end. And uh, the final shot of it just clipped up so that's as far as i've got so far um like i said i've just got to get them ferrules put on fill that with cement at the bottom and i'll be showing you the final pictures of it uh, wired in at the meter box whatever he does but uh he's coming in six days so that's as far as i've got so far okay so it's now 10 to 14 days later um 
got the same t-shirt on but i have washed it don't worry <laughs> just for a bit of continuity and this is the lead i've rigged up as i mentioned earlier the the plasma cutter which i'll be doing the next review on which i'm putting this socket in for is this a 16 amp commando i've wired in or had wired in a 32 amp commando just to give me a bit more future proof it was, it's as big a job whether i did it for 16 amp or 32 amp so i've done the 32 amp so let's go and connect this now i'll show you the finished job inside and out and uh, then we'll take it from there so that's the outside bit finished now as you can see i've filled it in uh, fully at the bottom and as before clipped up and the cable's now uh, completed by the electrician running to the box so that's a bit of a clearer shot you can see uh, it looks a bit of a mess of silicon but it'll stop the moisture coming in and as you can see the electrician has put the earth uh, tape and blue tape on to indicate earth and neutral on those colored wires the brown was already brown he's also put ferrules on now if you're not sure what ferrules are and why they're such a good idea click the tab above right i did another video on the use of ferrules and how important they are uh, particularly in, uh, in on cables that are carrying a, a high load like this will be doing so uh, just click on that tab and that will explain uh, how good ferrules are to use so this is it at the meter end the electrician has just left uh, the cable comes in bottom left there runs behind the fireproofing of the gas meter and up to this breaker here you can see he's put the label on 32 amp outdoor socket so uh, what's it all done at the meter end so just about to see if it all works as you can see i've rigged up that 32 amp by 16 amp lead the 16 amp plug from the plasma cutter plugs in there and then the 32 amp into the the wall box so as you can see i can't even turn that on without a socket being connected so if we lift that up pop it in there turn it on and as you can see we do have power so I'll turn it straight off it obviously runs for a bit to cool itself off so there you have it uh, that's the whole thing fitted like I said, this video was just a, a squeezing video before I did the plasma cutter one because I had to have that lot done for it. But it, it might help with anybody wanting to wire in a, a, a 32 amp commando socket and what's involved and what, what you can get on the market. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're up to now. Uh, all I've got to do now is read thoroughly read the instruction book for the plasma cutter, have a play with it, cut some different metals, and uh, then I'll be doing a full review on that. So look out within, um, give us a couple of weeks to have a good play with that. And that review should be coming very, very soon. If you do want to subscribe and get alerted to uh, future reviews, please click the little symbol of the picture of the shed here. And uh, more subscribers, the merrier. That's uh, not far off 2,000 now. So thanks everybody who's already subscribed. Let's see how quick we can get it to uh, 2,000. So I'll see you for that next review on the Plasma Cutter very, very soon. Thanks for watching this one. Bye for now.